Okay, so see now, first thing that uh, I would like to discuss is a simple like in you know, relations that exist between uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now, since we know that uh, these quantities are very significant, so understanding their sign notation is also very important. So displacement uh, is basically how much is the movement from the origin. So if you're to the right of the origin, it's your displacement is let's say positive 10. If you're to 10 units towards the left, left of the origin, displacement is negative. So displacement is simply how much you have moved from origin to the right or left. And um, now if I'm talking about the velocity, now if velocity, this is the displacement, if I'm talking about velocity, now if velocity is positive, now velocity positive, what does it mean is basically, you're moving towards the right. And if velocity is negative, it means that you're moving towards the left of the origin. So this is the very common, uh, this thing, and, um, um, and very important sign notation, like, you know, that understanding of velocity and um, uh, this thing, displacement, along with the acceleration. Now, acceleration, when it's positive, if I say acceleration positive, it means that your velocity is increasing. Acceleration negative, it means that velocity is decreasing. So this is very like you know common notations. So if displacement positive means you're standing towards the right of the origin. Uh, velocity negative positive means positive is to the right and negative is to the left movement. Acceleration being positive means that your velocity is increasing, and acceleration negative means your velocity is decreasing. So um, first, let's just talk about displacement velocity and acceleration. So here, the derivative of displacement function is your uh, velocity, derivative of velocity is your acceleration. If you integrate acceleration function, you're gonna get uh, indefinite integral, or you can say indef indefinite integral of acceleration gives you velocity. And if you um, put a limit to that, let's say if I put P1 to P2, it gives me net change in velocity. If you integrate acceleration with set limits, then it is, uh, basically the change in velocity. If you integrate velocity function, you get displacement function. If you put T1 and T2, you get straight away change in the displacement, or you can say uh, how much has the body displaced in this time duration T1 to T2. Now, one of the most important things that we need to understand are simple relations between each of them. Um, so when I look at simply, let's say, this is my displacement sign diagram. This, this is the graph of displacement function. Okay, and let's say this point is one comma, uh, this is S of P comma uh, versus T. And here this is this, this point is one comma three. And this point is one, two comma negative four. So suppose this is the function of, this, this is a displacement function. That means that you were at the origin in the beginning, then you displaced uh, to the right and went three units, then again return back to origin here. And then again, you went towards the left of the origin uh, are two seconds and your displacement is negative four and then you're coming back towards the origin okay you haven't reached yet so you're you're a little little closer from the origin now if they ask you like okay find out the maximum displacement okay so maximum displacement you can see is four negative four yeah. but if they ask you what is the difference between distance and displacement so if you see distance is nothing but absolute value of displacement so this can be a very helpful trick. Like if I'm looking at maximum distance uh, here, I'm going to just draw the absolute value of this. Now, when I draw absolute value, this part is going to be something like here. This is as it is. So this point is going to be two comma or uh, positive four. So the maximum displacement is actually um, four units. So this is the maximum displacement count. This is also the local maximum, but the global maximum is four for the displacement. So just remember that this is a very common thing, very common and like clear uh, picture for the distance versus displacement graphs. That when you have uh, when you've been given the distance graph, um, uh, displacement graph, you just take the absolute value, it you'll get the uh, distance. So this is how you first understand the relation between velocity and uh, distance and displacement. Mm -hmm. Now let us just try to talk about uh, velocity time graph. So if I if I have a velocity time graph. So this is, let's say, time. 
And here we got, let's say it's the velocity function. Now, if I've got the velocity function, which is let's say something like here. Now, what is velocity being positive or negative mean? Let's say if you got here one, uh, this is let's say three, and this is let's say here we got as, as uh, four. So it means that uh, if I can show it on the motion diagram, so in motion diagram, basically you started from zero, you moved one unit uh, for up to one second, you were moving to the right. So for one second, you move to the right. And I'm not putting here the distance because I have no idea how much we have traveled. So now at one second, you reverse the direction and travel until three seconds. I don't know how much it is moved to the left. It's subject to this area. Now, since I know this area is bigger, I'll come to that part also. So I'm just going to here. And at three, again, you reverse the direction, your velocity become positive. So here it is, velocity becoming positive, and then you continue moving. This graph goes on to long way. So what is logic here is that velocity, positive here, negative here, and positive here. Now, positive means that you're moving, your sense of travel is to the right, and negative means your sense of travel to, is to the left. Here, positive means, once again, your sense of travel is to the right. Now, remember that when I look at the area under the velocity time graph, it's a displacement. So if I assign a numeric value here, um, firstly, displacement is straight away t1 to t2, um, your, your velocity function. Okay, so this is straight away your uh, velocity function uh, for the, the, this thing. Now, what happened is that if I look at the um, absolute value of this, T1 to T2 will be nothing but the distance travel. So this will be distance travel. So distance travel. So this is the distance travel. So this is nothing but the um, difference between displacement and distance. Now here, if I assign a numeric value, so this is four, this is, let's say six, and this is three. So you're, if I talk about between zero to one, your distance and displacement is four, but after zero to, after, let's say between zero to three, your distance is gonna be 10, but your displacement is gonna be four minus six. Four minus six is basically gonna be negative two. So displacement is negative two. So actually went four to the right, and then six to the left all the way here. So this is six units. So you're two units up to the left of the origin. Then from this, you're going towards the right, which is like three units. So somewhere you're, you're, you're back to like, you know, now from here, you'll be one unit to the right of the origin, basically. So this is where you're at the end of four seconds. So it's very important to understand where is the particle reversing direction. So if you're finding where it is reverses direction, so reverses direction means Reversal direction means that you're finding out where velocity is, V of t is zero, so you solve for t, whatever is the time t equals to. So that's something which you need to understand as far as the concepts are concerned. Now, one of the very important thing is analysis of the velocity and acceleration sign diagram. So let's say I've got a function, velocity function, and I've got a displaced acceleration function. Now, a lot of times you find out, they'll ask the question about, okay, where is velocity increasing? Velocity increasing. Or where is velocity decreasing? So um, velocity increasing, it is we use acceleration sign diagram. So let's say this is one. I'm just taking some arbitrary values. And I'm just gonna put, let's say here as um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 maybe here. This is, this is, let's say two, and I'm drawing a sign diagram here. So let's say I'm just giving random values here. So negative, positive, and negative. So suppose if I've got something like this, now I'm gonna, uh, like, you know, just for velocity increasing, I'm gonna check where is slope positive for acceleration. So acceleration, if it is positive, um, you, you're gonna take, here is velocity increasing, and here is velocity decreasing. So, for velocity increasing, decreasing, just use acceleration. Acceleration sign diagram. So acceleration sign diagram is very important uh, for velocity increase or decrease. Now, 
velocity sign diagram along with acceleration can be asked to, I mean, can be clearly used to interpret, interpret uh, the speed. Now, when you talk about speed, speed is nothing but the, um, suppose if the velocity graph is something like this, your speed graph is just absolute value of this. So when I look at now speed graph is something here. This is speed graph basically. And here it is, let's say, um, I notice that in between where you're actually your velocity is decreasing all this while. Here because slope of velocity is negative. Here this velocity is increasing after this. But you notice that your actually speed is not following the same trend. The speed is actually decreasing here, then increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. So it is important that you consider both the sign diagrams of acceleration and velocity to find out the net speed, where is speed increasing? So first project the important points on each graph. So let's say here are the important pointers. And now whenever you see, now in beyond one sign of acceleration is negative, or beyond two here acceleration is negative. So here also it is negative itself. So if your velocity and acceleration sign diagram have the same numerical sign, if it has got same numerical sign, in that case, it will be, uh, your speed will be increasing. So either it is plus plus or minus minus for both of the sign diagrams, your speed will be increasing. Here you can see beyond two, both the sign diagrams are same. So you will see that the thing to the speed analysis, your speed is going to increase with beyond two. Between one and two, it is plus here and minus here. So between one and two, you can see here it is, um, uh, your one sign is positive, the other is negative. And basically in this case, your speed will be decreasing. So here speed will be decreasing. Here you can see negative and negative, uh, negative and positive. So again, your speed is going to be, um, Sorry, here it is positive, so 0 point minus it is only from 0 to 0 0.5, and here after this it is positive. So you can see sign diagram between 0 0.5 to uh, 1 is also positive. So here also speed is going to be increasing. But again here, first in this interval, the signs are opposite, so speed is going to be decreasing. So this is just the common terminology, or you can see common analysis of the terms uh, for the uh, kinematics. And one of the very important relations that we use and I'll be using to solve the problem is basically the relation which exists for uh, acceleration. So acceleration is dv by dt. We all understand how to apply this, but um, sometimes they ask acceleration in terms of displacement, in terms of displacement. So now, when you talk about acceleration in terms of displacement, um, um, so here I can write down dv by ds times ds by dt. So this relation is one of the very important relation where acceleration can be written as v times dv by ds because ds by dt is actually the rate of change of displacement, which is velocity. So velocity times dv by ds. Now, this is like, one of the breakthrough questions, like an example where you can easily lose this five to seven mark or like maybe 10 marks if you don't understand this, because you don't, if you have, let's say something like this, your velocity has been given as negative one over S Q and you're asked to calculate acceleration in terms of, in terms of displacement and hence find out acceleration at when your displacement is five. So when displacement is five, you have to find out the net acceleration. So in this case, you obviously have the velocity. So we need already, we already have got this in terms of S. I just need to get dv by ds. So dv by ds in this case will be, uh, firstly, you take this as negative one, s to the power negative three. This is gonna become, dv by ds is gonna become three, s to the power negative four, so three over s to the power four. That's the derivative that goes out here. So the answer for acceleration is negative one over s cubed times three over s to the power of four, which is negative three over s to the power of seven. Now you can plug s as five. So it'll be negative three over five to the power of seven. And that's gonna be your answer for this particular question. 
So here is this question. Basically, um, the displacement function has been given to us. Uh, S of t is t square cos t plus 2t sin t. And one of the reason I'm taking this question is basically because of the use of technology in this question. And how can uh, technologies just like, you know, help you with this question within a maximum of a minute? And if you don't know the use of technology, you're going to waste your time until like, you know, you uh, realize that there are like, you know, so many steps in, involved in case of you wish to do without technology. So the first question is that you have to find that the maximum displacement to years, your maximum distance travel. And here you have been given displacement function. You have to find out the next part is you have to find out the acceleration of the particle at an instant when it changes the direction. So um, just an, an, an overview is remember that here it is um, between zero to five seconds you're taking this function for. And second, it is, it is this function explicitly um, in, has to be in radians. When you plot in the graph of this, and it has to be in radians since it is calculated by put two. So it must be in the radians unit. So let us do on um, calculator. Let us see how does the graph of this look like. So first thing is I have drawn the graph of x squared cos x plus 2x sin x function, which is the same as the displacement function that we have been given. So I'm just going to um, take that function here. I ignore what I'm doing currently for the second and third part. So I'm going to just take that function. And um, I'm not going to take any other things at this stage. So the first function that we have here is your y1 function, which is the displacement function. Now, sometimes you can't see the window like of the graph properly. It's just because your calculator is in wrong mode. If your calculator is in degree mode while you're doing a radian question, your entire question is going to be wrong. So it's, this is where you need to be super careful if your calculator is in degree or radian mode. Now, remember that this is a displacement function. And in the beginning, as I said that, you would, when you're finding out the absolute value uh, of the dis displacement, you get the velocity, I mean, the distance function. So if I plot the absolute value, so if I uh, do option, numeric, and absolute function of y1 I'm plotting, so I don't need to retype the function. You can see that this is the absolute value graph now. You can adjust the view window a little bit for y values. So you can just make it maybe up to 15. So you can see the graph now clearly. Uh, so now when you're finding out the maximum, uh, for this, you could just deselect the, don't delete it, just deselect it. If you click on F1, your function, original function, just gets deactivated. Now, if I do GSOL max, you get first local maximum. That's not the maximum that I'm talking about. So, this is the maximum that I'm talking about, which is 16.5. Now, just imagine if you would have done like a lot of students here go for the derivative of displacement because you know you want to find a maximum of the displacement. Function. So you're going to do the derivative of it and then equal to zero, which gives us little chance or little time to think about that. Okay, here, if I do the derivative, you have to apply two times product rule. And so, question is three, three, just three marker question. So, you might have to, you might be wasting too much time if you don't do this on calculator. Second, now, the second part of the question is you have to find out the acceleration of the particle at the instant it changes the. First time you change the direction. Now remember that a particle or a body changes the direction when velocity is zero. Now I don't have a velocity function, so a lot of students again here they go on to differentiate the displacement function to get the velocity, which is not wrong, but it will be just time consuming. It will waste your time. It will you and, and you might not get the right answer with like you know with so much effort because if your calculations go wrong sometimes you might be. Um, like you know, having trouble getting the correct answer. So you can just do, you can plot the derivative of the y1 function. So you can see here, straight away you can do uh, press option, numeric, absolute, sorry, uh, option numeric and press uh, option cal, press option cal and d by dx of function y1. So you can't see y1 here on the screen, just press exit and press y1 and press execute. So here I can just 
like you know keep the other things deselected like i don't need any more maximum displacement amount so you could just de delete that so i don't need this so this is deleted so now you can see what you've got here is actually the velocity function and i can just show to you that you could have figured out using distance function also displacement function so you can see wherever your uh, the purple graph or blue graph you can see here is basically maximum so at 1.5 when it is maximum and at the same point my velocity is zero so obviously wherever your displacement is maximum or minimum you will see that that's the point where the body is reversing direction because you can see the displacement stopped increasing and then it is decreasing so it means that you're stopping here and then coming backwards Again, it can be when it is minimum. So you went all the way down, and then again, your displacement started increasing. It means that you started coming back towards origin. So wherever you got the maximum or minimum on the displacement function, that's the point. Your velocity is zero. And anyway, in lame term, if you want to look at it, is if you got the velocity function, if you have the velocity function here, wherever the slope is zero, that's the point. Your velocity is zero. I mean, displacement function, uh, where the slope is zero, your velocity is going to be zero. So that's the point here it is first time stopping so these are the two stopping point or you can say where it is changing its direction so uh, i'm going to do basically one thing is i'm just going to get off the distance function i um, mean displacement function and i'm just going to find out where is my velocity zero um so just to g solve and roots so when i g solve root i'm going to get my first answer is one point i'm going to get this 1.51 now the question is that if you find out where what's the acceleration now acceleration you have to do derivative once again if you do manually so instead of doing that you can just do it out here so you can just plot the second derivative i have since i've plotted already here i'm just going to deselect the y2 function you can plot the second derivative of the y1 function so you can i have you can just delete this so option cal and second derivative of y. So press um, exit once again to get that y1. So now you can see what you can see on your screen. You don't need to type any x value. You are automatically take x equals to x. Mm -hmm. When you plot in the second y2 function, like this um, function that you see here is actually the acceleration function. And they want acceleration at time 1.51. So if I had to do derivative, it might have been a nightmare because you know two times derivative, four product rules, and all those, and just for four marks, it's like too much of a waste of time. So you can just use these features to get the answers. So now here I'm going to get like you know, um, let's say I can trace at one point five one what's acceleration. So if I trace that, I'm getting acceleration negative eight point eight one. Um, which can be checked out through the mark scheme also. So we can check the mark scheme or the expectation for this question. So I'm just first going to show you the exact answer so that we are right. So you can see here um, that the first answer was 16.5, which we had got, and we got time as 1.51, and we just got the acceleration of negative 8.92. You can see that like we are expecting the use of technology in this. Like, we are expecting the use of um, basic uh, like you know calculator so that the students can solve the problems like you know effectively so you, if you don't know these skills on calculator you might struggle to get such questions i'm assuring you there will be definitely questions like this somewhere on the paper so just a quick cross check with the answers uh, so we've got the velocity function is one minus e to the power negative sine d squared write down the first two times where the particle changes the direction. So you're going to first plot this question, uh, graph on your calculator. So the question here is, um, I'm just going to plot in place of y1. So um, function is basically 1 minus e to the power negative sine d squared. So 1 minus uh, e to the power negative sine x squared and this you have to do for t greater than zero so i'm just gonna plot this 
So here I'm just going to deselect the other functions. And um, so you're going to get view window if I make it standard. Just keep playing around till you get like a proper value. And I think they just want a couple of these things. So maybe up till um, zero to three you can fit in. And your, yeah, so you can see here. And the second thing is you've got to adjust the Y window a little bit better. So you get negative that's two to positive two. So you can see the graph. Once you see, you see the graph effectively, you can do the work. So the question is basically, um, we have to write down the first time, two times where to change the direction. So when, where a particle changes the direct, particular direction, so in that case, your velocity will be zero. So just do G-sol roots, you can get first answer, which is 1.77, and the second answer is 2.50. So 1.77 and 2.50, you can see that as, as well as here. Then second is uh, for time less than T2, the particle has a maximum velocity. So maximum velocity, you obviously gonna do, uh, do G sol and max. So G sol max, so you can, you can just take these points, okay? So you're not gonna go beyond this. So D2, two G cell max, you can see maximum velocity is 0 0.63 at 1.25. So at 1.25, yes, that's the maximum velocity. And similarly, you can find out the minimum velocity also around that. So if I do G sol minimum, so if I do G sol min, you get the minimum velocity, which is one point, negative 1.7. Now, last part of the question is, uh, you have to find out distance travel between T1 to T2. So you have to find out basically what's the distance travel in the time from this, this to this. So obviously, since it is a distance travel, you can't directly integrate it. So you're gonna first find out the plot the absolute value of velocity. So in place of Y1, I'm gonna do option, Cal, first you plot the absolute value, option numeric, absolute of y1. So what we get here is basically the red function now is the absolute value. And just integrate uh, between the set limits. So I'm just gonna deselect the first function. You now you're gonna integrate this function from basically uh, 1.772 to 2.50. So you're going to integrate uh, one point. So G sol integrate integrate 1.772 to 2.50 or something. It is 2.506. So 2.506. So you can see that's the area. So the area is 0.711. Let's just cross verify with the mark scheme. So you can see here the time was 1.25. Um, and second was uh, 2.17. So just once, so between 1.77 to 2.5, we had to integrate. So, yeah, so this is how you kind of do this particular question. Okay, so in this particular question, basically we have been given two hybrid velocity functions. So it means that between zero to four, the function is basically following the like you know trend of the parabola, and then post four minutes, four seconds, it follows three minus t by two. And um, it'll be interesting to see first the graphs, uh, and they're asking find out the in position where is the particle at rest. So. Ideally, if you don't have the graph of these two functions, you'll be not knowing which one basically, whether the both the functions, if I equate to zero, from here I'll get t as six straight away, and from here I'll get t as t minus two, the whole square equals to five. So t minus two is gonna be root five, plus or minus root five. So t is two plus or minus root five. So one answer is two minus root five, other is two plus root five. And this is not possible. 
this is not two minus root five is not possible because this is negative time since this value is bigger than two, and two plus root five is the other function which is basically um, uh, having the value somewhere four point something which is beyond this. That's why you don't take the first function when you're equating to zero, and second uh, you can equate to zero. You get t by two minus equals to three, so t equals to six. So that's the answer for the first part. Then they're asking the particle returns to its initial, initial position after t equals to t, find out the value of t. So um, firstly, it will be interesting to see uh, what is the net um, graph that looks like. So I'm just gonna show you the graph of this function. So first function is basically uh, between zero to four. So if I can just show you the proper piecewise function. So you can put um, zero, comma, four, and then close the bracket. And second is basically four onwards. So we can put a comma here and basically you can take four. So take a big number maybe for the this thing, since we don't have infinity here. So I'm just going to plot this now. So you can see actually how does the graph look like. And only that part which is essential and important. So if I do area now, if I do integration from let's say zero, let's say, so if I want to integrate from zero to four, it means that it is 14.66. So during the first function, the body moved 14.66 to the right, and then um during four to six seconds, if I do integration, integration from four to six. Um, so I'm just gonna select the right function first. So four is the lower bound and six is the upper bound. So I get this area as one, which obviously you could have done manually also. So you can see that this entire area is 15.666. Um, so basically it is 15 to the third, 47 by three. So basically this area is 47 by three. If you were to integration manually, like if you integrate the first function like five minus T minus two the whole square from uh, basically zero to four plus integration, um, integration from uh, And second function with basically three minus t by two, if you do from four to six, um, that gives you how much forward that body has moved. Now, after this point, you can see, after this point, the body is returning back because you can see the velocity is negative. So it went to the right, now it is returning back. So it has to basically, if it travels 40, uh, 40, uh, seven by three along this, it must return by 47 by three. So it has to turn back 47 by three. So now I'm gonna use this area to return back. So you can just simply integrate um, three minus T by two from six to T and equate to negative 47 by three. Now why I'm equating to negative seven by three is because it's it's area, it's a area for us, which is 47 by three, but when you're doing it, you're simply doing a simple integral with this lower bound and the upper bound is somewhere this is t and this area will be negative. So since it's below x-axis, then that's why you quit to this and you can solve it to get the desired answer. So let's check out the exact answer that we have. So when I look at the exact answer, we have got, um, so 47 by three of the distance. So see here that it is basically the consume that minus to make, instead of three minus t by two, it is t by two minus three. So they're still taking an account that part again. So if you solve this integral uh, or using calculator, you can get the answer as t is 13.9. And that's how you do this particular question. So in this particular question, basically we have been given that uh, a particle P moves along a straight line with velocity v meters per second at time t is zero, p is at the origin and has the velocity 12. 
So initially it is at origin and has velocity as 12, and its acceleration is given by this velocity I mean the acceleration function is 3 cos t by 4. You have to find out an expression for a particle's velocity. So as I told you that like, you know, your velocity function is integration of acceleration function, which is 3 cos t by, uh, t by 4 dt. So you're going to integrate this. So integration of this part is going to be uh, 3 sine uh, t by 4 and divided by coefficient of x, which is 1 by 4 and plus c. So velocity function is going to be 12 sine t by 4 plus c. So now to get the c value, when t is 0, it has been given v is nothing but 12. So v is 12. So you get v of uh, t is basically 12 equals to 3 sine 0 upon basically 12 sine 0 plus c sine 0 is 0 so you get c is nothing but basically from here you get c as 12. So your velocity function finally will become um, for the answer for this part is going to become v of t is 12 sine t by 4 plus 12 so that's the a part answer. Now, next part is you have to sketch the velocity uh, time graph between 0 to 8 pi. Now, since you can see that time period of this will be 2 pi divided by 1 4, 2 pi by b, if you remember, uh, b affects the time period. So, it is 8 pi. So, it means that you have to sketch one proper cycle of this particular function. So, one proper cycle of this particular function, when we integrate, when we find out um, the integration will be basically a uh, mini graph with the graph of this. So initially it is, uh, initially it will be, this is the sine graph. You can see it's a vertical stretch factor by 12. So it will go at all the way to something like this, 12 to minus 12, and then move 12 units up. So basically this will be something like this. This is zero to eight pi. And then this will be 12 and this will be minus 12. And so this is at 2 pi, this is at 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on. So now if you move the graph 12 units up, this will come somewhere like this. So this is how the graph works. So this will be the final graph. Remember, this is a non-calculator record, so you need to have these understanding of the concepts. The next part is they're asking, find out the path distance traveled by the particle before coming to rest. So distance traveled by particle coming to rest. So here is the particle, here is the position where it is coming to rest. First time, which is at 6 pi. So you're going to find out this area by using the integration. So now if you integrate 12 sine t by 4 plus 12 between 0 to 6 pi, you get the desired answer. This will be velocity function, uh, so your displacement function on the graph. Uh, if you find out this will be negative 12 cos t by 4 divided by 1 by 4 plus 12 t, and then you put the limits from 0 to 6 pi. And this will give you the answer as since if you plug 6 pi, this will become 0. And so if you simplify this, the final answer will come to 72 pi plus basically uh, 72 pi plus 48. That's the answer for this particular expression you should get, which if you approximate, like, you know, approximate value for this, 74 meters. That's the answer for this particular part. So like you can see the eight mark question, just for the conceptual part. Now the next stuff is a little bit different one, which is another particle O moves in a straight line with displacement at S and velocity is given by this. Acceleration is here and at t equals to zero, um, particle q is at the origin and it has got the velocity this. Show that the velocity function is this. So once again, um, since dv by dt, acceleration is negative v squared plus four, you bring in dv by v squared plus four, separate the variable, equals to negative dt, and then integrate both sides. So this is one by two, t 
tan inverse or arc tan T by two equals to negative T plus C. Then you're gonna plug in when T is zero, uh, you're basically, the V is two. So if I plug in that here, so you get uh, half tan inverse of uh, two by two, which is pi by four, but we put this first. Uh, zero plus c, so that gives us c as this is pi by four divided by two, which is pi by. So c is going to be pi by eight. That's your answer for this part. Now you're going to put that c out here, so it'll be half tan inverse of uh, v by two equals to pi by eight uh, minus t. So you can multiply it here. So if you multiply this out here, so you get tan inverse of V by two is pi by four minus two T. That's your pi by four minus two T. And now if you take tan to the other side, this basically become uh, tan pi by four minus two T. And then multiply that by two to get this more value. So that's your velocity function. Overall, like, you know, which we want to differentiate two, and if you take LCM of this, you get exactly the same thing in, inside the bracket. So that's how you find out the expression of, of the first part. Next up is um, we have to find show that the dv by ds is this. So since we all know that acceleration is uh, v dv by ds, now this is the, one of the very important results as I told you. Acceleration is negative v square plus four is equals to v dv by ds. So if you make dv by ds the subject, you get negative v square plus four over v as the answer. The next part they're asking is find out the distance traveled by the particle before coming to rest. So you have to integrate this or solve this differential equation. So I'm just gonna show it here. So I'm gonna take d, v by v times dv um, by v square plus four equals to negative ds. So that's your one answer. Now, if you integrate this by substitution, it is going to be uh, basically if you remember f dash x over fx format, that makes your life much more easier, which is ln fx. So if I can just see, okay, if I multiply this by two and divide by two. So I can get the exact derivative in the integrator. So integral will be one by two, integration of two v upon v square plus four equals to negative s plus c. And uh, this integral is half ln v square plus four equals to negative s plus c. Now, when v has been given as two, you can see s is zero. So plug uh, that out here. So you get C as one by two ln eight, you put here, V as two. So you get C is one by uh, two ln eight. And then you, you're gonna substitute that out here. So it'll be half ln V square plus four equals to negative S plus half ln eight. Now, before it comes to rest, your velocity will be zero when it comes to rest. So you plug in that and solve for C. So C is going to be half, S is going to be half ln 8 minus half ln 4. And if you simplify this, this answer comes to be somewhere. Um, I mean, if you write down in log form, the half can be taken out. ln 8 by 4, which is half ln 2, basically. And that comes out to be 0.347. If you simplify this, 0.347. This is like one of the very common question, like, you know, this skill you must know, this is very, very, very important question. So that's how I do this question.